you don't know how to be an individual. And we want to get back to our discussion on race relations in the United States. Plus, Pastor R.C. Blake's Jr. joining And as leaders on a local level, when we begin to combat the rhetoric with truth. Pastor, thank you so much for joining me. It's such a terrific conversation that we even have to be having. What are you hearing from? Let's talk. This is a, a prophetic word that um, I just needed to drop in your spirit today. And the title of this particular discussion for this day is the spirit of urgency. I told you from day one in 2019 that the Lord told me that this is the year of now. That there are things that have been delayed, there are things that we have um, procrastinated on, things that have even been denied that will no longer be denied, that the doors are open, the heavens are open over your life, over your lives, and whatever you're going to do, do it now. And so the Lord has really been impressing upon me about this spirit of urgency. One of the things that frustrates me is to look at people who do not have an urgent spirit. People who just kind of lollygag, waste time, allow the circumstances to get on top of them where they're under the circumstances simply because they did not have the spirit of the sons of Issachar that they discerned the times and they did not move in the moment they should have moved. Now urgent defined as something demanding immediate response immediate response to a crisis or action necessary right now to seize an opportunity. When, when there's a spirit of urgency on you, it is, it, is, it is demanding of immediate response to a current crisis or action that is necessary in the now to seize an opportunity. And I'm here to say to you that there are a lot of you who are in your prophetic moment the thing you've been praying for, your, your, probably your parents prayed for, the thing you've been believing God for, it is now, but you have to have a spirit of urgency. In Isaiah 43 and 19, he says, Behold, I will do a new thing. He says, Now, I love that word, now it shall spring forth. Then he asks a question, Shall you not know it? Am I going to do this new thing in your midst and you miss it again? The main cause of destiny forfeited is procrastination, indecision, and sluggish reaction to moments. Let me read that again. The main cause of destiny forfeited is procrastination, indecision, and sluggish or lazy reaction to moments. A slug is, you know, just a, a big snail that just creeps around, just something that moves slow. <laughs> and there are a lot of you, quite honestly, who are missing your moment because you, you move like, like a slug. Now, moments are the keys to manifestation. You have to understand that. Moments are the keys to manifestation. When we are out of sync with the moment, we waste our potential. This is why you don't have time for folly. You don't have time to just sit around on, on your, your phone, you know, looking at what other people do all day long. It's time for you to find out what is it that God has for you because the moments in your life are the containers of manifestation. And when you are out of sync with the moment, you waste your potential. This is why Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it'll speak and won't lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, but it is for what? An appointed time. And sometimes we are out of sync with that appointed time and we are missing the moment of manifestation because there's no sense of urgency. Now, the greatest drag on corporate vision. I was here today in New Home Family Worship Center, Baton Rouge, dealing with the leaders. Wednesday night in Houston, we're going to go back into some more leadership training there. I'll be there. 
But the greatest drag on corporate vision are people who don't or won't do it now. I was just here and I, I, was, I was standing here in the balcony and they were vacuuming and they were vacuuming and they were vacuuming and they were vacuuming. They, you could tell, were making certain that that floor downstairs is immaculate. We had to cut them off for a few minutes for me to film this thing, but they were doing it now. The greatest drag on corporate vision is to be saddled down with people who won't do it now, who talk about what should be done, what should happen, what we could be doing, but won't commit to doing it themselves and won't do it now. Now, now watch this. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, he says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. God instructs the man of God to write the vision to people who will run with it. Sometimes the vision of the house is held up because there are sluggish people who do not appreciate the moment and do not have a spirit of urgency. And, and sometimes as a pastor, my frustration is I come in and I say, this is what I want to see happen. I want to see this happen. I want to see this happen. And sometimes I say it for years. And people sitting around looking and never taking a spirit of urgency to bring that thing to pass, even when they have the authority and the power to do so. The greatest drag on vision is a sluggish spirit that does not appreciate the necessity for urgency. Because, you know, as I was pondering this subject matter, I discovered as I looked into the scripture that God is a God of urgency. You'll be, you'll be hard pressed other than God's mercy uh, to, to withhold judgment. You'll be hard pressed to find occasions where God takes his time to do anything. God is long suffering and you know, his mercy is never ending because he does not want to destroy his people. But when you see God functioning, he is a God of urgency. For instance, in Genesis 11, uh, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Listen to what the Godhead says. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So even the Godhead had a spirit of urgency. These people were building a tower trying to reach to the heavens and it was an ungodly feat. But God says their unity and their urgency was so powerful that they would accomplish anything. And God said, to, the Godhead said to one another, let's get in a hurry and let's go down and confound their language. Even God has a spirit of urgency and he's all powerful. So he's even saying, if we don't do this now, this thing that we will be displeased with will come to pass. Even God saying there are occasions that he has to move now, lest the thing that he desires not will come to pass. How many of you are sitting here watching me right now? And your life is in a place that you disdain. But when you look at it, it is the consequence of lethargy. It is the consequence of laziness. It is the consequence of pondering and never acting. Some of you are there right now. So even the Godhead, even God had to be in a hurry at a certain point. Let me ask you a question. When are you ever going to get in a hurry? People say to me, they say, oh, you work too hard, you travel too much, you need to slow down. Man, I got things to accomplish. A lifetime is, is really just the blinking of an eye. I have things to accomplish. I got stuff to do, and I got to do it now. Could your present condition be the consequence of the lack of urgency? In Numbers 13 and 30, speaking of Caleb, one of the two original Hebrews that came out of Egypt that went into the promised land. The Bible says, and Caleb stilled the people. When he got to the promised land, his report was positive. 
he stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. He had a spirit of urgency. And when you look at how Caleb was only one of two that went in to possess the land, God talks about him in Numbers 14, 24. He says, my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went in and he and his seed shall possess it. God says, because he did not have that laid back, lazy, doubting spirit, but he had another spirit, the spirit of urgency. I'll bring him in and he'll possess it. I'm here to prophetically declare, I'm here to prophetically declare that what God has for you demands a spirit of urgency. You must do what you're going to do and you must do it now. The oil is on your life to make this happen now, but you've got to get a spirit of urgency. All of this, I'm praying about it. You know, I'm, I'm believing God. You ought to pray for God to give you instruction that you may get up off of your knees and do something. Now, there are three things I want to share with you about the spirit of urgency. Number one, when you lack a spirit of urgency, and the, the opposite of a spirit of urgency is a spirit of laziness. Um, it's a spirit of, as I said, lethargy. It's a laid back spirit that waits for tomorrow to do what one could do right now. But number one, fear, listen to this, fear feeds off of indecision. The more you procrastinate, the more you will procrastinate because the more you procrastinate, the more fear and unbelief and doubt grow beneath the surface. And some of you do not have a spirit of urgency because you are saddled down, you are weighed down by a heavy spirit of fear that is the consequence of that thing growing in you over the years that you have procrastinated and procrastinated and waited and waited to do what God told you to do. And the longer you wait, the less you believe. There are some occasions that God will tell you to do X, Y, Z, and you don't have time to reason it out. You don't have time to bring a whole committee together to discuss it. You got to leap on that thing because the all of God is present in the now moment to make this thing come to pass. And that's where some of you all are now. You're in this place where God has put the anointing on you to make this thing happen now, but you're sitting down with people that's talking about, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's, let's think it through. You've been thinking for the last 10 years. It's time for you to act on this thing because your fear is feeding off of your indecision. I like, I like the record of, um, I like the record of, of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, uh, somewhere around verse 48, you know the story of David and Goliath. There's this big giant talking about, you know, who gonna, who gonna, who gonna deal with me? Who gonna deal with me? You know, I talk about your mama, I talk about your daddy, I talk about your God, I talk about your nation. Who gonna get me? Who gonna get me? And David, a little boy, he says, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And he talks Saul into letting him go, and Saul won't give him arm and all. He said, no, I don't need that. He said, I'm gonna go with what I'm used to. I got my slingshot, that's all I need. And he goes out to fight the lion or to fight Goliath because he had defeated the lion and the bear. So his faith was high. But I like what the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And as he was running, he was winding that slingshot up and he hit him right between his eyes. And then you keep on reading when he fell, the Bible says again, and David ran to Goliath and took Goliath's sword and cut off his head because David understood the only way to defeat this giant is to move. 
I cannot sit here and ponder. I cannot sit here and allow my imagination to get me. I got to run towards this joker. I got is a spirit of urgency. I got to move while the faith is high. Because the longer you procrastinate, the less likely you are to advance. Because indecision entertains doubt. Number two. Second reason you got to have a spirit of urgency is because destiny is on a clock. Everybody talks about destiny. Everybody talks about vision. But most people die talking about it. Most people die never having realized it because they spent their entire lives talking about it. Have you noticed? Just look around. Have you noticed? There are a lot of folk around here talking, but very few are actually doing it. Not understanding that destiny is on a clock. The day you lost yesterday is a day you never have again. And there has to be an urgency about life, about ministry, about family, about business, about career. There has to be an urgency because destiny is on a clock. I'm 54 years old at the time I'm filming this. And it was just yesterday I was 30. Destiny is on a clock. Look what the Bible says in John 9 and 4. Jesus says, in fact, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. There's coming a time when you won't be able to do the work. You, you, you're in a season now where you can do it and you're procrastinating because you fail to understand that destiny is on the clock. There's coming a time when you won't be able to do the work. I run now because I can. I'm in a season of my life where I can do it. But there's coming a time when I won't be able to run. I have to be urgent about this present season, dispensation, time period, moment. And I have, to be, I have to be urgent because there's coming a time and Father Time is going to get the best of this body and I'm going to slow down. And there's some of you who are wasting your youth, the season when you should be using all of your might to accomplish what thus saith the Lord in ministry, in business, in life, in career, in family. You are squandering it because you fail to understand that destiny is on the clock. Things change. And then the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Everything has a season and a time. When you miss your season, when God has ordained a season for you, but you, did, you failed to use your time properly, you failed to use your time urgently, you miss your season, and you miss one season after another, after another, after another. And then God pulls the curtain because destiny is on a clock. Thirdly and finally, indecision will ultimately cancel your destiny. You keep fumbling around with life and squandering your potential, disrespecting your gifts, not adhering to the prophetic signals. God has given you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and you keep coming up short. Your destiny will be canceled. There's a man in the Bible who... Um, was a rich man and he, he just got richer and richer and richer and he said I'm gonna eat drink be merry and build bigger houses and the same night death came for the man he says you, you fool your, your soul is required of you who all that stuff that you have spent your life foolishly building this empire for who's gonna spend all of that up how many of you are sitting here right now looking at this and don't realize that time is winding down and what you should have done 10 years ago, you're still playing around with today. 
Look what the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 13, verses 7 through 9. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, three years I come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I found none. Cut it down. Why encumbereth it the ground? And that word is just a synonym for why allow it to take up space, and it's not fruitful. And he answering said unto him, Lord, leave it alone this year again till I shall dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, great. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Is your life in a place where God has given you every opportunity and all of the potential to be fruitful, but you keep coming up short? You keep coming up lacking? You keep coming up with excuses? When you let go of your excuses, you will find your purpose and your destiny manifesting. If you keep allowing the time to slip away from you with indecision, you're gonna find yourself in a place where you have lost a lifetime and you've manifested none of God's potential that he has invested in you. This is a season of urgency for you, for me. The spirit of urgency has to rest upon you. Those of you who God is pouring vision into and you sitting there, you just thinking about it, stuck in limbo, won't make a choice, won't make a decision. It's time for you to move while the oil of God is upon your life, while the heavens are open. This is your season to move and to do it now, not tomorrow, not next year, but right now. The spirit of urgency upon your life. I love you. I thank God for you. And I want you to know that this is your time and the time is now. Red is father-daughter talk book. A lot of you whose ignorance has been shattered. <laughs> that I have not had a father in my developmental process, I can still come to a place of victory in my personal development. Ultimately, it is really not about who rejected you. It is truly about who accepts you. I had to provide for myself, which is a, man, a father's job, right? Mm -hmm. I had to take care of my younger sibling, which is, was my father's job, Absolutely. right? You will discover that you will find within yourself the power to see yourself in the way that only you and God can see. <laughs>